Well, that was uh, super hard, especially with kids. Welcome to my bedroom. <laughs> Huge shout out to Daniel Schiffer for making these creative shorts on YouTube and giving a ton of people inspiration, like me, to make something like this. Pretty much just ripped him off. Anyway, go follow Daniel if you don't already, you goof. And uh, yeah, let's uh, break down how I did this. I shot all this on the Canon 1DX Mark II with my Sigma 24 Art F 1.4. I also used a 1 8 strength Pro Mist filter in the front of the lens to kind of give that foggy, dreamy look. I also used a Godox SL200W to light the scene, diffused through a 60 inch impact octagonal softbox. This setup is actually more affordable than what you see on YouTube with the Aperture 120D all the time. Everything was shot at 120 frames per second at 1080p resolution. Most clips were shot between f4 and f5.6 to make sure I grabbed focus because I was focusing pretty much everything manually. The shots are definitely not perfect with focus, especially with children being a variable. And the one clip I used out of focus on was the push-in clip on the KitchenAid. Not sponsored. I used camera movement on some clips, but I relied on most of my post-processing skills to create movement and interest in the edit. How I edited it. Edited it. <laughs> How it edited it. <laughs> well, first I always select my music from Musicbed. Uh, I am an affiliate with them, so if you're interested in having a subscription, go check out Musicbed in the description. One of the first things I do when I open Premiere Pro is I include an adjustment layer. So I open it up, add an adjustment layer, just like that. And I drag it over into my timeline and extend it all the way across. This adjustment layer is where I'm going to put my LUT. I'm using a custom LUT right now, but um, yeah, just look into LUTs if you're interested. I don't have any for sale or anything. I'm sorry. Hopefully soon. And then I add another adjustment layer that I title bars uh, that I put a crop on. So if I go up to the effects panel and hit crop and drag that over to the clip, you'll see that I take off 12.2% off the top and bottom to create that 2.39 to 1 ratio look that everybody does for their spicy b-roll on YouTube. Plus the bars give you extra flexibility of moving your clips up and down without losing any resolution by zooming in at all. Now a lot of the movement that you're seeing within this video is done in post. I did a lot of digital zooming, keyframing to move them around, but I do have some BTS footage of what I did in the moment with my hands for the ones I did use with my hands. Also with shooting 120 frames per second, a lot of the clips are really smooth because there's 120 frames per second, minimizing the amount of camera shake on the footage. But from time to time, I'll nest those clips. So right click, nest and throw warp stabilizer on the clip to smooth it out a little bit more and i did not shoot this with a plan i didn't storyboard it uh, i kind of just went with the flow because <laughs> my last name floberg okay so this opening shot was just 45 degrees pointed up at the ceiling and i actually started with punching in on the clip a lot by using the scale right here so uh, i started at 160 for the zoom and i always add a keyframe at the beginning when i do this i reposition and add uh, two keyframes for the position and the scale and then as the clip goes on you could see that those are changing drastically. This just adds digital zoom as opposed to the original shot. I shot this one with a little bit of movement down, pushing in as the sugar fell into the bowl, but I also added some more digital zoom to make the effect even more drastic. Now this shot's pretty interesting and I'm not really that stoked about it. I just kind of wanted to do that zoomed in keyframe look where I follow the egg in my son's hand. Uh, it's really hard to film a three-year-old holding an egg, cracking it into a bowl. <laughs> There are tons of keyframes to follow that hand, whether it be moving it around or digital zoom with the scale. I speed ramp this to a much faster percentage. It's 200% uh, uh, its normal speed. And then once it actually hits the bowl, uh, I slowed it down and overlaid it with 50% opacity on the egg crack shot next as sort of a transition. At the egg crack shot after the the two frames are interspliced over each other. I did a little bit of speed ramp as well. So if I go into this nested clip here, uh, whenever I pull it into Premiere, it's at 30 frames. So I always slow it down to 80 when I want it to be a true 24 slow motion. And then the second half of this is sped up to 500 speed. And as that's going, you can also see that there is a digital pull out. So I'm pulling that out as I'm pulling the camera back. It's both digitally and with my hands. And it's nested here so I could throw a warp stabilizer on it, as I mentioned earlier, with just 10% smoothness. As I mentioned before, the KitchenAid shot, this is the only time I used autofocus for the whole thing. So I just locked on autofocus onto that KitchenAid logo right there and just slowly pushed in 
towards the machine. And then I chopped it up uh, to change the speed and do a little bit of motion. So as you see, I hit that second frame right here in this sequence. You can already tell that I punched in a lot with the 115 zoom. And I added a lot of keyframes to do the back and forth motion of the actual KitchenAid going back and forth and blending all the ingredients. In that small little section, it's 10 frames right there. I cut that 10 frames because I used a preset uh, for swiping out of the scene. You can see it kick to the right. It's by a dude named Chung Da, and it's just a pan right effect. I did that for the outro of this clip and the intro of the next one. This one I also did with my hands. I pushed into the frame while tilting the camera to get that twisting effect. Now this one, I also used my hands to follow the actual mixer down as my wife placed it down into the bolt. That's why it has that trippy look that's following it. I'm not gonna go in the nitty gritty of all these cause I think you've seen a lot of them of just messing with the keyframes and the motion and the scale, splicing up clips and doing them at different speeds. So you can see here all the cuts I made to each individual clip. And this is one of my favorite shots of the whole thing. Uh, this top down look, I was just standing up as still as I could and framed it up so that I knew I could reframe it when my wife went to put the the cookie dough balls in the oven. And then the idea was to, as she put it in the oven, I would slide it and the black part of the oven up top would act as this place where I could get a black frame. And then I could come back out as soon as the cookies were done in that same exact spot where I was like crouching over the oven, which felt very dangerous. And for this last shot, I tried a bunch of times. I just put an oven mitt, a fabric oven mitt under the camera and just slid it in. And what I did was I went all the way to the front of the pan to get my focus where I wanted it, where I was gonna end up. And then I left it on manual and slid it back and just tried a bunch of times going fast to slow and then whipping out. So that's how I shot all of it. And in true Daniel Schiffer form, I added some sound design after that. I like to get sound design from a free website called Zapsplat super easy it's free so I, I didn't find all the things i needed online so we actually went back to the kitchen and recorded some of the sounds of the ingredients <laughs> Thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed that some thoughts that i have i know like i said i'm going to get better at this i just have to keep trying and i, I hope that it was inspiring to you or at least you can try something like this and while you're quarantined i don't know i'm really excited to do this more and get more creative with it maybe do it without kids another time <laughs> so i can storyboard and get really uh, interesting shots creative shots take my time bring it into the computer kind of like what daniel does on set and play around with it there and honestly being in the scenario we're in now where we're locked indoors it gives us the opportunity to try new things maybe things we wouldn't have done before maybe things we put in the back of our mind and never came to fruition so hopefully this inspires you brings you to action on doing the creative things that you've been holding off on doing for a while uh yeah thanks so much for watching guys hope to see you in the next one take care Thanks, guys. Welcome! Post this on shop. If you like it, subscribe. <laughs>